Nouvelle Rousse, the place to live. This is how you normally see Belarus from the perspective of the media. Grey, dull. They call it the last dictatorship of Europe. You hear that and you have no idea what do really these words represent. You probably don't even think to ever step on the land of this mysterious country, because who knows what might happen. This country still has KGB and death penalty. And what is more interesting, in the fall of 2021, no big airlines are flying to Belarus or even over Belarus, and only the Belavia, the governmental company, does the flights. Eurobills are still made of Belarusian flags. I went to Belarus to see what country is really like, without any perception, without any expectation, just me and the city, and I interviewed some locals to tell you their perception on the current situation. Let's go! Belarus is often called the last reserve of socialism in Europe, and many people arriving from this country say, wow, it's like I've been to USSR. Still, there are pompous casinos which coexist with all of the Soviet symbolism and going through the streets of Minsk you see these placards which are saying that our farmers and our agriculture is the basis of our country. And on the other hand, you're seeing the brands, you see McDonald's, you see all of these Mercedes-Benz scrolling through the streets and you feel bizarre. If you come to Minsk by train, the first thing you will see will be the gates of Minsk. Two towers that are meeting you and open in perspective to the massive avenues of the capital. And you feel like you're a really small human entering a really huge world. This pulsating white center of Minsk was built after the war as a single utopian project in the Roman image and likeness. It was planned as an ideal place to live, a real city of dreams. The socialist dream didn't happen, but the majestic, austere development has become the hallmark of Minsk. Lenin Square, the main post office, the gates of Minsk, the palace of culture and trade unions, all these buildings, together with the main avenue, make foreigners wonder how powerful and grand Minsk is. But it wasn't always like that. Minsk was almost completely destroyed during the Second World War and it had to be rebuilt to suit Stalin's vision of a great city. Here is the propagandistic video that tells it all. На недавней линии огня вышли дети и матери, молодежь и старики, очищали город от следов фашистского варварства. Дома, школы, дворцы. Куда ни посмотришь, Всюду леса новостроек, словно Минск – одна большая строительная площадка. Если спросить знатного каменщика товарища Булахова, он ответит – так оно и есть, мы весь город заново строим. So, have you seen how ruined it was and how many people have managed to reconstruct it from nothing? That's why there is no antiquity to search for in Minsk. There is still a little island in the middle of the city, which they call the Old Town. It's in fact the Trinity suburb. And there you can find the little doll houses from the pre-war times, the real Eastern European narrow streets with the cobblestone and red roofs. And some of the buildings are here from the 16th century, but most, of course, were reconstructed to suit the main atmosphere of Old Town and to attract tourists. Now it's the main place for the photo shoots. But most of the things are Soviet or modern in Minsk, like this amazing structure. It's called Rombekubektaider. And don't worry, uh, locals call it just uh, Chupa Chups. It's a symbol of modern Minsk, and this is not a castle, not a planetarium, and not even a presidential palace. It's the National Library. And previously this was a 
a swamp, like most of Belarus, and once the authorities of the Republic came up with an idea to build something that is definitely not in other countries. The building was finished in 2000s and cost 200 million dollars. Funds for the library were not provided by the state. They were collected from all residents of the country. Depending on the positions, the amount ranged from $5 to $30. And how do you like this state initiative? Would you participate? There is a convenient observation deck on the top of the library, and there are 9 million books stored inside. Climbing to observation deck, you realize that Minsk stands directly in the middle of the forest, which is quite surprising. And it's not even clear to you, is it? A huge park in the city or just a city built right in the forest. In fact, Belarus has no mountains, just forests and swamps. And the highest mount is 300 meters, it's called Dzerzhinska Gara. Even if you go to one of the first districts built after war, you still don't feel like you're in megapolis, you feel like you're more in the little town, it's called Asmalov. It's a quiet neighborhood right in the middle of Minsk. It's a two-story 1940s development surrounded by green trees and it's been struggling in the past few years for the survival. It was the very first residential neighborhood in Minsk built immediately after the war and you will not find another such quiet and secluded place. Walking here is even cooler than in the park because you can see the drying clothing, you can see kids on playgrounds, and it feels like it's a real village. Imagine, 1,300 trees growing here are already 70 years old. And it's a real time machine for those of you who want to jump immediately in the post-war Minsk. First thing that you surely notice arriving to Minsk is how clean it is. It has spotless streets, ideal Soviet avenues and ideal park zones. An internet resource called Street has made a list of the cleanest countries and cities in the world. And Belarus is in the top 10. It's actually third. Singapore is in the first place and Tokyo is the second. And to be honest, it really seems like there is nothing to complain about in Minsk. It has spotless streets. It has no problems with immigration, it has no problems with unemployment, because they made a law that actually is a tax for the unemployed. So if you couldn't find a job, it's your own problem according to the government of Belarus and you have to pay. Belarus is even called a country of startups, because if you think about World of Tanks, Viber app and 2Giz maps, they are all created in Belarus. And that's why Belarusian high-tech park is often called the Silicon Valley of Eastern Europe. But what surprised me the most is coming to the main square of Minsk, right in front of the government house and in front of the huge statue of Lenin. I felt like I was in a Minecraft game, because you're just standing in front of the empty facades with no light and no people around you. Show the origin of the Soviet power and of how the government was dominating over the people and how it was only about masses and not about the individualism. All Minsk is a huge amount of avenues. and. All you want to do in Minsk is just to march them cheerfully by the sound of the orchestra playing. But don't get carried away too much, because all of this lasts for around 15 kilometers and it's better to take a bike or the perfect public transportation of Belarus. There is a metro, which was opened in 1984, and it was just one line. The design of Minsk metro is, of course, infused with the Soviet past. You can find on the walls of Oktyabrska station inscriptions with the communist slogans like the land for collective farms, factories for workers. Previous chapters were about the Soviet Minsk. But is there the modern life? Is there contemporary culture? Yeah, Minsk has some hipster places. The district is called Oktyabrska, so it's around Oktyabrska street. 
And there are still the working factories which produce things like machinery tools or even yeast. And when you're walking around, you kind of feel the smell of the fresh yeast produce. That's what we call the gentrification. There are graffitis, there are many sculptures and street art, and all of that was created as a part of the festival Vulitsa Brazil. Next place where you should definitely go to understand the real life of the town's people and to meet them, to talk to locals, is the famous street food market Komarovka. On Komarovka market you can find fresh cheeses, you can find the buns from the local producers, a lot of the famous shawarma, because Belarus and Minsk are particularly proud of their recipes, and of course a lot of the locals of babushkas who will be telling you about the freshness of the products, about their farms, about their life maybe, and be ready for the long conversations and the real immersion into the life of the people. The market itself has a form of the UFO, and you can find a lot of the strange buildings in Belarus, which are part of the architectural style called modernism. I am a big fan of it, because it's 1960s, all you had was concrete and metal, the government was against of what they called Islishistva, so it meant the over-beautifulness of the buildings. So they said, built only concrete, no decorative elements at all. And the architects, they were, you know, they were creative. They were making the special shapes out of this concrete. They were trying to give the meaning to the building and to what was inside. People called them the creepy concrete boxes, the inhuman monsters, or buildings that oppress the psyche. But I think that you can love them or you can hate them, but to remain indifferent is just impossible. As you see, for every and each of us, Minsk is different. What do people who live there think about the current situation? Do they think that there is future? Do they want to stay in Minsk? Or do they just want to leave because of the regime? Как у, мне кажется, у всех постсоветских стран. Там... Курсы на втором курсе может сразу поехать в Москву или поехать. Вот. Потому что там лучше учиться, чем тут. Я не знаю почему так, но просто зарплата там выше, да. Особенно в Москве. Это... Ну, то есть привлекательно, потому что зарплата, развитие и все такое. Да? Да. Карьеры в разных сферах. Я художник вообще. Вот, да. И мне придется остаться в Беларуси. Но здесь Но арт, арт средой как-то вообще, да, было классного от местных. За людьми добрыми, чтобы людей, да. Есть мальчики красивые, девочки красивые. Все красивые. Ну, в этом новый, новый, новый. Что самое любимое вообще здесь, в Минске, такого есть? Общага. Да, знаю общага, вот реально. Люди, да, в Минске это получается люди. Ну и я заметил, что природа, да, тоже. Что-то такое Да, парки. Здесь очень много парков, по сравнению с другими городами. Такой спокойный и классный, да? Да. Супер, да. Тогда, в общем, приехать стоит в Минск, правильно? Иностранцам обязательно. Да. Спасибо. Спасибо. Now it's fantastic exploring Minsk. We had... Kind of no impression. This is not a city known for kind of tourism, for American tourism, and so it's very nice. Streets are very clean, great condition. The architecture, fantastic. I fell in love with Minsk, with the open-hearted people, with the clean streets, with the beautiful nature, and I hope that by this video I showed you a part of Belarus which is not covered by the cliché, which is just sincere as the people that I met. And come to Belarus and see it all for yourself.